Okay, so this is going to be the third and final video for the control bracket, for control bracket part three. The subsequent two videos are for part one and part two. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is focus in on what changes on this one. we got a couple. You can see there's a, a pretty good amount. Uh, it looks a lot different. Uh, the pocket cut is the same as part two. Um, the biggest difference, though, as you can see, is that this has changed. If you recall in part two, this line on the bottom right here is actually attached down here with this more at an angle here, okay? The angle you in the last drawing was 30. This one has actually changed to 50. So we're going to have to come in and take and break this. And what I'll probably end up doing is deleting a lot of this and recreating it where this end point is horizontal from here. And this angle with this line, this end point is horizontal to this center. The top doesn't change in the angles or anything of that nature. The 35, 25 stay the same. The inside cuts are the same. The only other major component is up here. Now, this one you got to be careful with. They're actually having us change this circle to a diameter of 12 or a thickness of 12 and this little bump out from 10 to 17. However, if you look at this, these angle pieces and this part going around it are staying at five millimeters. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick of how to reuse a sketch. We're going to have to actually play around a little bit. This one is a pretty advanced part, especially on the modification. So really watch this video carefully. I'm going to show you a couple tricks that are, 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 are helpful um, and will help you get through this part. Okay, so I'm going to move this to the other screen real quick. Come into here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay with part number two right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start kind of pulling this back up to the top. So I'm going to start right here. Nothing changes with these two. So I'm going to kind of pull this down to the next level. Now, this is where our first major change is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly open this sketch up, do a space bar normal two. And now what I got to do is I got to change some things. So for instance, I got to change this to a distance of 50. Now, what is probably going to end up happening is I'm going to have to do some movement here. Like, for instance, I'm going to take this horizontal off, okay? I'm going to take, in this case, um, actually what I'm probably going to do, I'm just going to be up front. I'm going to delete all this inside stuff. And the reason being is because with all these dimensions, um, control Z that, sorry. With all these dimensions and lines, it's really easy to get everything screwed up. And I know this seems like a lot of work, but this is what I want to get done. Um, I'm going to take this all, this bottom half off, and I'm just going to recreate this and then offset one more time. Okay, so all I'm going to do is take, take this. I'm going to take this point right here, and I'm going to make it horizontal here. I'm going to take this circle right here and do the same thing. I'm going to bring it up and make it horizontal to here. I'm then going to take my line tool and attaching it to here, I'm going to come straight out, pull away and create a shallow curve and then finish by attaching to this point. Okay, now what I want to do is make sure that this line and arc are tangent. This arc and line are tangent. Okay, then I'm going to add in a 50 degree. Or actually, I'm going to make this 20 first. That's 20. And I'm going to do a measurement between this angled line and that surface there. I'm going to make this 50. Okay, so that is where we want to be. Okay, now the reason this one turned blue is I lost the vertical relationship here. I'm just going to add that back on and now everything is in black. Okay, we're good to go. Now I'm going to take my offset tool, five millimeters, and I'm basically just going to do the same thing again, reverse and click these lines as I did before. So I get to this point right here. Okay, hit my check mark. I'm just going to quickly add in the five millimeter. That's what's missing, five millimeters. And at this point, okay, nothing changes. The thickness stays the same. It's still at 10 millimeters. So all I'm going to do is now exit this. And now there is the modification. That piece is done. Okay. No, it's just it's it's just a matter of you, you understand how to take relationships off and on and sometimes delete a sketch and re-add a sketch. The key is how quick can you do that, okay? In that case, it wasn't too bad, all right? Now, working my way down, I'm going to add this piece on, okay? Now, as you can see, <coughs> I got a slight problem here with my sketch. 
okay? This is obviously not right, all right? So this has got to go all the way up to here. So I'm going to actually have to go into the sketch and fix that, okay? So what's going to happen here is coming back into this, I the 20 and the 30 stay the same. I'm just going to do a normal two, but this line has now disappeared. So I'm going to get rid of that and drag this up to here, right up to that edge. Okay, that looks good there. Um, this is going to drag up right to that point. All right, and then all I'm going to do is just take my line tool, and I'm just going to connect a line right there. Okay, easy peasy. All right, now I'm just going to hit and close that. That fixes it to there. Okay, that's at five millimeters. All right, but here's the deal. I'm going to come back in here. I want to go into the sketch for a second. I'm going to highlight this. All right, what I want to do is actually go in... <coughs> and you can either draw on top of this if you wanted to. It's up to you. One of the things you can do is highlight the sketch and go to Features and hit Boss Extrude again. And what it does, it automatically creates another extrusion using the original sketch. However, what I want to do is it, you can do a couple different things. Um, one of the things I'm actually going to do is go back to this sketch here, and I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to actually cover this with a circle. <clears throat> and that may may not make me sense, but I'm just going to draw a circle here, okay? And then I'm going to close this. Now, what's going to happen is going to give me error, so just say exit and build anyways and continue, okay? Here's why that happened. The boss extrude doesn't know what to do with that circle I just drew. So I'm just going to go left-click and open that back up, and under selected contours here, we're going to go in here and just pick these pieces right here for 5 millimeters. Okay, that's all I want to do, just those two regions. I'm going to hit my check mark. Okay, now I'm not going to panic, this is missing. I'm going to highlight this, this sketch again and go ahead to Features one more time and hit Boss Extrude. Okay, now it's waiting to figure out what do I want to do. So I'm going to delete this contour, right click and clear, and I'm going to pick that circle. Okay, notice nothing else is being extruded. All right, now what I'm going to do is go to mid-plane. I'm going to make this now 12 millimeters, and I'm going to hit my check mark. So now, all I did was take the existing sketch. I made one modification in that sketch, and from that, I was able to create two separate boss extrudes by just clicking on this sketch. Okay, that is a trick that's a little more high level, something I wouldn't expect you to know how to do right away. Um, you, uh, some of you would have maybe just added on to there. That would have been fine. There would be nothing wrong doing that. Okay, but I just wanted you to see that. Okay, now this boss extrude is gone because I need to extrude this. Instead of 10 millimeters, we're going to extrude this out 17 millimeters and check. Okay, now the reason it's giving me a little pitch right here is because what it doesn't like is that I change this circle. So what is lost here is it doesn't know where that point is. So I'm going to delete that, Control key, Control key, and make him, con oh, not co-radial, excuse me, delete that. I'm going to go, not tangent, geez, make him concentric. Okay, now it will get rid of this error. Honestly, I would not mark you wrong for the error. Okay, I just, I know for some it drives them nuts when they have errors over here. All right, so now there is my new look. Five millimeters here, 12 millimeters there, 17 here. I pull this down one more time. My cut extrude looks good, awesome. Okay, now we created that new plane. Those two cuts and the mirror are still okay. All right, so I'm at this point still in great shape. I'm almost done. The only thing left to do is add my chamfers. Now I'm gonna pull this down. Now, not all the chamfers are there. There's an error. And the reason that occurred is because I changed so much of my sketching, it lost the edges. And that's unfortunately when you change these things, the fillets and chamfers kind of get affected by it. I'm just going to left click and come and edit. Okay, see all the missing edges? I'm just going to go in here and right click, clear selections. I know this is not fun, but we're just going to go back and do the same thing we did before. and click all of these edges again, okay? Yes, it's not fun having to constantly do this over and over and over, but at the same time, it's about the only way you really can get it to work without 
losing all your stuff. Uh, get this inside edge here. I think I got that. I got to get oops, one more here. Okay, this outside edge here. Bottom edge down here and here. Okay, and then the inside edges here, here, uh, here, here, and here. Uh, and this last one right here, I believe. If I hit my check mark, the color is already on, and it looks like everything is back to normal. Okay, now don't just hit save here. You do, you're gonna wipe out number two. So let's do a quick file save as. Okay, control bracket, part number three, underscore your last name and hit save. As soon as you're done with that, go up to your evaluate mass properties, find the mass properties for this, take that answer and put it into the assessment for problem number three, mass of control part number three, and Upload this into Schoology so that this part is done. At this time, the control bracket parts 1, 2, and 3 are complete. If you have questions, do not hesitate to email. Otherwise, good luck. Take care.